I'm going to go ahead and uh, call the meeting to order and ask Mr. Coley to call the roll, please. I see that Commissioner Anderson is present. Commissioner Fennell? Here. Commissioner Hamilton? Here. Commissioner Herbert? Here. Commissioner Robinson? Here. Commissioner Thompson? Here. Commissioner Williams? Here. You're 100% today, Mr. Chairman. Great. And uh, everybody was um, sent the uh, minutes, and except for uh, Mr. Williams, who uh, we're not going to let him move to approve these minutes, <laughs> uh, even though he was here in spirit, he said. Uh, is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? I move to approve. Second. Okay. Any discussion, changes? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, first item of business are, uh, I guess, are we, are we going to talk about these as a group of folks that um, are the resolutions uh, 1290 through 1294? Uh, commissioners, I'll remind you that in April we had a lengthy presentation on our five-year plan as well as our budget. But since Commissioner Anderson wasn't here, we're going to summarize that today and then uh, offer the resolutions. No, I mean... <laughs> he was here in spirit, but he didn't see the, the information, so Bruce wasn't here either. He was kind of I was, she's talking about when I was asleep. Yeah. <laughs> that part of it I missed. All joking aside, Mark will summarize uh, the presentation and then offer the five resolutions for your consideration. Commissioners, today we do submit for your consideration the budget for fiscal year 2014 in addition to three, three funding recommendations for the proposed budget which include a gas margin increase and bond issues for the gas and water systems. And just to let you know, the, the budget information we'll share with you this morning, the details and also going through the funding recommendations, all that information is consistent with what we provided to the board at the April meeting. So to get us started, just a high level overview of the budget. It is $851.8 million, and at that level, it does represent an increase of $11.3 million, or approximately 1% over the current year budget. What's driving the increase? We have two major substation projects, actually new substations, that will be under construction next fiscal year, on the Cherokee Trail substation, and then also a new infeed substation in East Knoxville. Um, also, some labor-related expenditures are higher than the current year, um, including a uh, pension contribution that will be $2 million higher than the current year. We also have wage growth, obviously, built into the budget, and some additional staffing positions to support our Century 2 programs that we talked with the board about back in April. The proposed budget will also um, have the, the dollars that will allow us to continue to meet our infrastructure replacement goals for the Century 2 program and also continue to meet the federal requirements of the federal consent decree for the wastewater system. We also have three margin increases um, reflected in the budget. One is proposed today, the gas margin increase that we discussed with the board last month, and then the electric and water margin increases that the board previously adopted as part of that series of three increases back in 2011 for both systems. And you can see on the chart the impact that will be on the residential customers monthly bills. And two have already been approved one we'll discuss further today, but it is sub submitted for your consideration on first reading, the gas margin increase. Um, commissioners, just to let you know, I have about 30 slides, so I'm going to um, try and go through this next series on the budget as quickly as possible. Again, it matches with what we showed the board back in April, and also what we, the materials we provided to the board last week. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna move through these fairly quickly. If you have any questions, feel free to, to interrupt and, and let me know. But total budget, almost $852 million. You'll recall that when you adopt the budget, you adopt an appropriation for all four divisions. So for the electric division, we're looking at $563 million, gas 116, water 59, wastewater $114 million. By major cost component, wholesale energy is always the largest at 55% of the total budget. It's $470 million. O&M just shy of $126 million. Obviously, that provides for the operation and maintenance of the four utility systems. Capital, $167 million, 20% of the total budget. You can see electric and wastewater are the highest. Those two combined are about 70% of total capital. Debt service at $60 million. That's principal and interest payments on outstanding debt for next 
next fiscal year. And then in lieu of tax payments and then the FICA tax, 28 million, uh, the proposed budget. Again, total 852 million. I next uh, have a slide on each of the major cost components. I'll touch upon it quickly. Wholesale energy, $470 million. Of that amount, $413 million will be paid to TVA for the purchase of almost 6 billion kilowatt hours of electric power to, for us to resell to our 200,000 electric customers. Natural gas, $57 million, purchase of 9.5 million decatherms of gas from suppliers. Also provides for storage and transportation capacity costs that we pay for the pipelines. <coughs> um, at this time, well, the, in the proposed budget, it doesn't reflect really any significant change in wholesale prices from the current year. Uh, TVA has not announced whether or not they're going to have a base rate increase sometime in late 2013. We have not included that in the proposed budget. Obviously, if we hear from more, we'll talk to the board about that. Our o &M budget, $126 million, as is typically the case. Almost half of that is in labor-related expense. And you can see what those labor-related expenses are. Payroll, $41 million. Um, cost of active employee medical benefits is about $9.5 million next fiscal year. Post-employment benefits, $10 million. $5 million of that is our required pension contribution. Uh, $4 million is retiring medical claims. And $1 million is our 401k match. Um, looking at the non-labor-related uh, expenses, we'll make about $34 million in total payments to contractors and consultants that do work on behalf of KUV. Most of that's along the line of utility system maintenance. The biggest ticket item there is vegetation management at $7 million. And then for materials and other costs, $31 million. Um, that represents utilities, fuel. The biggest ticket item is utilities at $8 million. Our proposed capital budget of $167 million. Again, typically the case, almost 90% will be directly spent on utility systems infrastructure. Included in that is $31 million for Phase 10 collection system related projects in fiscal year 2014. The two large substation projects that we'll be working on next fiscal year make up the majority of the $16 million for our substation work. We have $12 million in gas main replacement. We have several large main replacement programs. The project scheduled for FY14. And you can see the majority of this work, as we've talked about with respect to our Century 2 uh, programs and presentations. For example, full replacement, $8 million for next fiscal year for the replacement of 2,600 homes. <coughs> Excuse me, moving on to debt service. Uh, total budget of almost $60 million. You can see on the pie chart on the left that wastewater makes up almost 50% of that. But of the $60 million, $25 million in principal payments and $35 million in interest payments. At the end, or the beginning of the next fiscal year, we'll have $839 million in outstanding bonds. We're going to issue, we're proposing to issue an additional $50 million in debt next fiscal year, and that's $25 million in gas system bonds, $25 million in water system. And then our in lieu of tax payments and FICA tax that we'll pay next year, total of $28 million. I mean, almost all, majority of that is in lieu of tax payments. It's $24 million for fiscal year 2014. Uh, of that $24 million, $15.1 million will be paid to the city. And that represents about a $900,000 increase in what we paid them this year. $8.3 million will be paid to Knox County, and that's about a $500,000 increase over. The remaining 600,000 to the other taxing jurisdictions. Commissioners, the next chart, since we're on the subject of tax equivalence, um, we did include this on that cost management handout we gave you at the April meeting, but we didn't talk about it in detail at the meeting. But um, it does show how our tax equivalent payments have grown over time, going back to 1994 to what they're projected to be in 14. And you can see. Back then, it was approximately $10 million total in 94. <coughs> Next year, it'll be $24 million, growth of $14 million over that period of time. That's an annualized growth rate of 4.5%, which is almost double the rate of inflation over that period of time. And if you compare it, <coughs> the black line shows what the pilots would have been if it had just grown.
drone at inflation and the difference between what we've actually pay, paid in the inflation adjusted $75 million over 20 years. So really the, the point being that the pilots, that has continued to grow over time and it has put obviously some rate pressure on, cost pressure on KUB. We've been able to successfully manage most of that. But when you compare it to how our other operating costs have grown over time, it's almost double that rate. So just really wanted to provide that for your information. So you see that pilots do have an impact, obviously, in our financial position. Any questions on that? Yes, sir. In uh, 94, do, do we know what our total budget was? I, I'm, I'm just looking for kind of percentage because we're at about 27 million. Is that 7-8% of our total budget? Is it a little thing? Something it's about 5%. Mm -hmm. Back then it would have been a higher number. I don't know what it is, Commissioner, off the, off the top of my head. Um, I do know as a percentage of revenue, pilots has grown a little bit over time. Um, I remember probably around Back in here, it was probably around 2% of total revenue. Now it may be closer to 3%. But I can, we can get that information for the board if you wish to provide. I mean, is there, that's a reflection of what we own. Is that right? It is a reflection of our capital investment. <coughs> and so a big part of this then is, is the phase two project. Phase 10 project, phase two, phase it, is, it is a component of it. Century two cause this to go to rise even faster? It will, yes. We'll continue to see it growing probably at that rate of four and a half to five percent. I'll, I'll remind you, I, we've said it before, KB is the single largest source of revenue. Commissioners, this chart reflects how the proposed budget for 2014 will be funded. <clears throat> and if you look at the pie chart on the left, we are projecting total revenue next fiscal year of $750 million for all four systems combined. You can see by the pie of where that revenue, what that revenue will be used for. And the majority of it will be used to fund the proposed budget, including $43 million for the uh, capital program. Capital next year, as we talked about, $167 million. $43 million will come from revenue generated in FY14. $50 million will come from the proposed bond issues. And $74 million will come from uh, general fund cash. Now that number may seem a little high to you, but basically what it represents is system revenue for the electric and wastewater systems for the current fiscal year. Both those systems had large bond issues this year to fund their capital programs, so the revenue built up some in cash to be used next fiscal year to fund the capital program. And that's basically how our financial plans tend to work. Uh, so if you really look at the, the mix between system revenue and debt, this right here really represents system revenue just from the current year. So it's really a 70-30 split, revenue and debt for the capital program. Does that make sense? So, um, explain the seven, the seven <coughs> split. Okay, I was just looking at um, of uh, how the capital program is funded, going to be funded next year. Looking at revenue and debt, debt's thirty percent, and if you add the twenty-six and the forty-four, there's your seventy percent. Because really, this just represents system revenue from another. So if you're looking at an equity debt of how your capital is funded, that's what I meant at 730. Hey Mark, is that pretty typical, that ratio in the past 10 years or so? It varies. It varies. Um, it's, 
it's going to be probably more of a 60 40 uh, 40 percent debt 60 percent equity and those years when we're showing a wastewater system bond issue they typically run in the 60 to 65 million so it might be a little bit higher in those years but if you look at our debt ratios for all four divisions um, they tend to fall wastewater 60 percent the other three are in that 40 to 45 percent range Commissioner is transitioning and now talking about the funding recommendations for the proposed budget. Uh, they do include the gas margin increase that we discussed with the board, also two bond issues, and then we have our annual request for a line of credit for the gas division to help us manage the seasonality of cash flow for the gas system. And we'll talk about each of these in a little bit more detail, in particular the margin increase. And as you know, we originally scheduled this increase for back in 2009. It has been deferred four years thanks to savings from our recession response plan. And that savings has resulted in total savings for gas system customers of 22 million over that four year period, about five and a half million per year. For the average residential gas customer over that period of time, they've saved $150. The increase is designed to generate an additional five and a half million in annual margin or revenue to help support investment in the gas distribution system. And we have structured it in a way that it will add three dollars to every residential customer's average monthly bill. And we'll talk about how that structured the implementation of that in just a moment. And it represents only our third increase since 1995, the span of 18 years. And if adopted by the board on two readings, it would be seen on customer bills beginning in October. Have you, you may um, go over this. You say every customer, does that mean if, even if, if they are able to get gas but they don't use it, are they still going to be charged with three dollars? Or is it only usage? Now, if they are a gas customer, that will apply to them. To it's going to go on the customer. Everybody that is an in-service gas customer will receive that. However, in the case, if you run across someone who's really not using gas but hasn't had it disconnected, right. then they can have it disconnected. Right. Right. Okay. Correct. And are we doing it in six months or the one, one year? Right. We're proposing to spread it over the entire year. And I've got some charts on that here in just a moment. We'll, we'll go back over. That's a good question. question about that. I was thinking about this the other day. Um, if, if there is a wastewater line in the road in your subdivision, your bill, even if it's down your septic tank. Is that, is that wrong? Under certain conditions. It has to be within 300 feet, it has to be but gravity I mean, flow, it, et cetera. If you meet the, the parameters, that there's, it's called wastewater availability charge, basically. You're not connected, but you still pay. And that, that's state law. Yes. It, it, Does state it not apply to gas? show this chart to you back at the April meeting and just that as a reminder what it does show is KUB's portion of a residential customer's monthly gas bill and how it has changed over the last 20 years and if you go back to 1993 1992 our portion of the bill was $15 and we have had uh, three increases over that period of time in October of 95 we added $1.50 to the bill in July of 2002 we added dollars to the bill and in October of 2007 approximately another three dollars to the bill so today it's about twenty two dollars and nine cents our portion of the monthly bill our margin what we use to fund our distribution system cost OIM capital etc the black line represents what the bill would have been if it was adjusted at the CPI consumer price index inflation each year and you can see it has trailed inflation for the most part in fact the F residential customer has saved $300 compared to if it had been adjusted at the rate of inflation over that period of time. So
So again, only a few increases. <coughs> the gray shaded table at the bottom reflects how the gas system has changed over that period of time. If you go back to the early 90s, a capital program less than 10 million debt, 40 million, and we were adding close to 5,000 customers per year. So we had a source, new sources of revenue coming on each year. What has happened over that period of time is our capital program has doubled, and in fact, if we took this out and went out to 14, 15, 16, we're gonna have a capital program that's consistently over $20 million. Um, the debt level has risen to help fund the capital program, of course, but the new source of revenue has dropped off, and even in 2011, we had a net decrease in customers, and, and we talked about that last month, though it is beginning to pick up a little bit. It's nowhere near what it was back in the mid to late 1990s. So consider that, and also consider the fact, again, we showed this last month, but mild winters have had a significant financial impact on the gas system. In fact, we've quantified it, and we've lost about $35 million in margin over the last 20 years because of mild winters, and you can see 18 out of 20, 90%, have been warmer than normal. And the big daddy of them all was in 2012 when we lost about six, six and a half million dollars in margin for that. So you remember this and you go back and you think of capital programs been, has more than doubled, new sources of revenue have dropped off, and you've got the significant impact of the mild winters. I think it is um, sort of a, a testament to, in part, our cost management over time that we've only had increases over that 20 year period. Because there certainly has been a lot of financial pressure on the gas system to do more than that, but we've been able to manage the majority of it. And I know we talked about last month, obviously the gas margin increase is designed to support investment in the system. Here I just listed out some of those programs. And as Julie talked about last month, the completion of the cast iron ductile iron program we're removing that from the system over the next couple of years. We have about $13 million in our gas capital plan to do that. Uh, replacement and corrosion protection for our steel mains, we have about $13 million in the capital plan for that as well. And then one of the largest gas system projects in recent years is that replacement and upgrade of the gas transmission line down Alcoa Highway, a stretch of about eight miles. We've already spent several million dollars on that. There'll be another $17 million spent over the next three years. And then a new um, expenditures that we added to the plan this year was the development of the new regulatory required distribution integrity management programs, or we call them DIM. And we added about five, five and a half million dollars to the gas plan for that. So all of this just to show you there are some key programs, initiatives, projects that the margin increase is going to support. Hey Mark, this is this data uh, available to the public if they want what you just shared with us? Is it available to the public they need it? Is Certainly. It, is it? It's posted on our website. Yes, okay. it's anybody that wants to see it, that's true. So we have someone too, if I know for some people it would probably be, need some instruction explaining what's going on. We've got somebody to address those concerns and somebody call in and to explain, right? Oh, certainly, yeah. Our, our customer service staff is ready to answer questions on it. And um, this afternoon, actually, our key account staff is ready to go out and meet with our larger and commercial industrial customers and talk about the impact of the increase on their bill. Yeah, we're, we're ready to roll on it. Great. Now I want to talk just a few minutes about how the increase is going to impact the individual customer classes, and we talked about this in some detail last month. Um, you know that our residential, non-resident, all our gas rate schedules include those fixed monthly customer charges they also include usage charges. Rates apply to how much a gas customer uses each month. Okay. Um, we also know that the gas system, like our other systems, and most of our distribution system costs are fixed in nature. So they don't go down, they don't really change based upon the weather. If it's a mild winter, if customers are using less natural gas, they tend to stay relatively constant for operating capital costs. Okay. They're not dependent upon weather. So it would make sense Thing to recover at least a majority of your those distribution system costs or our margin through the monthly customer charge. For the gas system, that's currently nowhere near the case. For that, our portion of the bill at $22.90, I showed you a few minutes ago, only $2.65 of that 
is through the monthly customer charge, so about 10%. Contrast that with our other systems where we've been addressing that cost recovery issue in recent increases, electric's 54%, water's 54%, wastewater's 42%. We need to get that gas uh, percentage up close to those levels as well. So what we're proposing to do for this, the margin increase for residential customers will be applied solely to that fixed monthly customer charge, adding $3 to it on an average monthly basis. And I'll show you a little bit more detail about that in a moment. For our non-residential customers, commercial and industrial, it'll be a combination of increasing customer charges and also increasing their usage rates. But the usage rates for residential will be left alone. Commissioners, this chart compares our average monthly residential customer charge with a host of other gas utilities, local and regional. And you can see currently we're the lowest among the group of 12 at 265. And we're also a bit of an anomaly with this group in that they all charge a year-round customer charge. And you can see the levels that they basically charge. KUB currently charges $5.30 a month, only during the winter heating season for the months of November through April. But if, when you think about it, those fixed costs are being incurred every month. It makes sense to have a year-round charge. So what we're proposing to do is to increase that to $5.65 and charge it every month of the year. So for winter bills, the increase is only going to be from $5.30 to $5.65. For summer bills, though, it's going to go from zero to 565, be 565 for 12 months a year. That helps with the cost recovery issue. It also makes ours consistent with how everybody else is doing. Okay. Any questions on that? Does the math work out that it's a $3 yes, sir. on average? Yes, sir. Because the 265 is taking the 530, converting it to an average monthly bill, and then there's your $3 um, this is probably a question you may not have an answer to, but if, how many new customers would we have to add to to uh, equal the five and a half million dollars if this rate increase? I mean, the margin. How many new customers would we have to have to generate five and a half million dollars in margin? Good question. Um, of course, there's going to be an in increased capital cost to some degree bringing those on the system as well, but ignoring that for, for the moment. Um, let me see. Um, three to four thousand. Does that sound right, Mom? About four thousand. Yeah. Right, that present value. Yeah, calculator behind your back. <laughs> Mike's the walking calculator, so I just refer to him. Where do we go online if, if this works out in better than normal year, better than last year, 2011? What are we, how many customers do we know? 600, 700. Yeah. We don't see going back to those 4,000, 5,000 levels uh, any time ago. Commissioners, I wanted to show you, um, go beyond just the residential customers and show you impacts on average monthly bills of, of other customers. Uh, obviously, residential's on here at $3. Uh, we have approximately 8,000 small commercial customers, and I just picked out a couple of representative samples from that. We looked at a, at a dental office um, that uses probably around 65 firms a month on average uh, of gas. Their monthly bill, $92. The increase would add $6 to their monthly bill, so it would be $98. Um, the actual average usage for that customer class is a pizza delivery shop, and their monthly bill is currently $310. The increase would add $15 to their monthly gas bill. And then when you get into the larger commercial industrial customers, um, our other rate class, our restaurant, current bill of around $3,100, the increase would add $150 to their monthly bill. And then we looked at a medium and large size manufacturing firm, 
so they use more gas, their monthly bills are larger, so the increase on their monthly bill will be um, larger as well in absolute terms, but not on a percentage basis. How does who are the large gas customers in general? UT or the hospital? Or? The, the largest customer we have is University of Tennessee, system supply customer. The majority of our large industrial customers actually transport on our system. They don't buy their gas from KUV, they buy it from a marketer, and it's delivered here and we simply transport it on our system. So their absolute bills are not that great compared to say a UT, but they're buying their product from somebody else and that's the majority of their bill. In total it's about the same probably, but who they pay it to is different. Well how many approximately do we have in the large? In this range, we have about 350. In the medium and large, or just the large? Um, or it's, just a, it's all really okay. one rate class. I've picked out from our large commercial firm class, we have about 300, 350 okay. total. And have we notified them that we the, the largest customers will be notified this afternoon, mm -hmm. as far as waiting well. for the board's action. And commissioners, for looking back at the residential gas bill, we went over this last month, but just to show you how we compare to the other gas utilities in our peer group. This chart shows it really on a what I call an even playing field with respect to the interstate, interstate pipeline impact. We talked last month about our <coughs> geographic location can cause some of these utilities to have to transport on multiple pipelines, so there's some additional costs. That downstream pipeline impact has been stripped out of this comparison, so everybody's sort of on a level playing field from that perspective. And you can see where KUV is right at the middle of the pack. If you had the $6, and we've estimated, we know for KUV the cost of that downstream pipe is $6 on our monthly bill. We put the $6 on everybody else that falls into the same position as well. And you can see how the monthly bill comparison changes. And then when we add the three dollars for the KUV margin increase, you can see how we compare to the other utilities. Any questions on the gas margin increase? I'm going to move on and talk about the, the debt for just a few moments. So when we, if this does pass, and you will contact the, um, I guess, the larger the Commissioners, we do have bonds built into that are needed to help fund the budget. Gas and water system bonds, um, they will be sold through public competitive sale, $50 million total, $25 million each, they will be fixed rate. The only really difference between the two is with our water century two funding plan, that debt is spread out over 30 years, paid back over 30 years. Gas, we're looking at 20 years. Everything else is basically the same, and obviously we need to go to city council and get their approval. I am required by the debt management policy to show you what the proposed debt service schedule is for the new bonds, so that's why this chart is basically here. I will point out that the projected interest rate that we budgeted for the gas bond issue is 2.75%, and that would equate to about $8 million in interest expense over the 20-year life of the bonds. Um, the total principal paid in the next 10 years it will be 54%. I show that because debt management policy requires that we report that and it has to be 30% or greater. So you can see we meet that test. And the <coughs> debt ratio by the end of next fiscal year will be 40%. And this
this graph basically shows the yellow is existing debt service, the red is new debt service, so you can see it's roughly a levelized payback for that bond issue. Even though we go to city council for approval, it doesn't show up in their debt. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah, we, we always um, make that very clear to them and also make it clear that the taxpayers water bonds also $25 million. The projected interest rate's a little bit higher than the gas because it's longer term debt. It'll go out over 30 years. So three and a quarter equates to almost $15 million in interest over the life of the bonds. Total principal paid in the next 10 years is 33%. That is in compliance with debt management policy, though it is a little bit lower. It is lower than um, the gas system. And then the debt ratio for the water division by the end of next fiscal year is 44%, which is consistent with our Century 2 funding plan. And I also want to show you just what the estimated costs are for issuing, selling the gas and water bonds. You can see the various firms that we intend to use to assist us in the sale of the bonds. The estimated cost in total is $220,000, which is four-tenths of 1% of the par value of the bonds, which is very competitive, consistent with past debt transactions. And to close out the discussion on the debt, we are requesting again the line of credit for the gas system. We only use it if needed be. I mean, actually the timing of the bond issue may play into whether we actually need to draw down on this or not. We have 20 million for the current fiscal year. We actually drew, drew down two and a half million on it last fall. That's since been paid back. And you may wonder, why do we have to come every year and ask for this? Can we not just have a longer term note? And unfortunately, the answer is no. State law only limits a one year, state law limits a one year maturity to uh, gas debt used to fund purchase gas costs. So that's why we're back to read. And um, my assumption is that state law also won't allow you to borrow in terms of like you can't borrow funds from another division even though they might be available, is that true? That that is correct. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily a state law um, prohibition, but um, it, it's a, a charter that does not really allow us to do that. But we, you're right, we can't do it. So. What, on, on average, over 10 years, what have we borrowed on, that, on this line of credit? Over the last 10 years, if you, we've been doing this since the mid-90s, Commissioner. Uh, we actually drew down some significant amounts back in the 90s, but I would say in the last 10 years, on average, um, one to two million, because there's been several years we <coughs> need to use it at all. It's just there, it's in our toolbox if we need it. And Commissioner, really to close out, um, you also, while you'll be asked to adopt budget appropriations, we also need you to adopt commitment appropriations for FY14, and that simply covers contracts that will be executed next fiscal year that commit KUV to expenditures beyond next fiscal year. And the total we're requesting is 58.6 million, and you can see that broken down by the four systems there. And these are the, some of the major projects that are driving the need for that, those commitment appropriations. Several of those we've already talked about this morning or talked about last month. Um, they just, they are multi-year projects, so those, we need an appropriation to cover dollars that go into the other years as well. And that's my presentation. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I have one other question about the annual appropriations. Uh, as I'm reading the resolution, the appropriations are made at the fund level, and so budget control is at the fund level only? By fund level, you mean? Uh, or division level. Sorry. Yes, that is yeah, correct. Division yeah. level, sorry. That's correct. Each division stands on their own, so we can't go over.